my name is Diana Amanya um, and I'm happy to be here. I am currently studying full time. I study at the University of Nairobi and I am in my final year doing architecture. Final year, final semester. So I just have a few more months to go. Currently, um, in the past six months, I have just been in a state of well, I think the lockdown has more or less helped. It has slowed down life. It has slowed down school. It has slowed down just the anxiety and the plans that, you know, we make for ourselves. And so for me, I have found myself in a space of waiting, of waiting. I am now in a, sp in a period, in a season of transition. I'm finishing school and I'm getting out. And so I had, this this time has been good to me because i've been able to relax to just hear from god just try and dwell in his presence try and hear from him it has quite it has been quite um relaxing yeah and just peaceful to dwell in the presence of the lord so i'm just waiting i'm just in that space of waiting so in the past six months i have seen god come through for me I've seen God be my provider. I have seen God be my protector. I stay here in Kenya alone. Um, I'm not Kenyan, so <laughs> I, I, I stay here alone. And so the lockdown and just this time of um, social distancing has found me in a space where I have to be by myself most of the time, you know, for my safety, for health reasons. And so I have just seen God be my friend in these moments. He has been speaking to me and just encouraged me that, you know, it's not a bad season and there's a lot that I can learn from it. Yes, so the past six months have just been a time of hearing from God and just trying to be in his presence. In this season, the Bible verse that is speaking to me is from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 23. And I'll just read it um, quickly. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the throne of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Um, this verse is very profound to me. Maybe if I might give you some bit of exegesis. In the Old Testament, how it was done was that um, the holy place which is depicted here, in some translations it's called the Holy of Holies. And basically this was like the innermost part of the sanctuary, the innermost part of the tabernacle. Um, in the Jewish tradition and this was believed to be where God's presence was felt in the Holy of Holies. It was only accessed once a year on the Day of the Atonement and it could only be accessed by the High Priest and so he is the one that could atone for the sins on behalf of his family and on behalf of the people. Um, so just to give you a bit of a physical outlook of how the Holy of Holies looked um, this was a space probably um, about nine meters by nine meters by nine meters, nine meters cubed. And it was on the western side of the, of the tabernacle. And so what, what, what defined it was that it was a dark space and it was known as the most sacred space in the temple. Um, it, it was defined by like four pillars and a veil. And on that veil had um, motifs of the cherubims. And, and so the veil was to like separate the innermost part of the temple from the lesser holy part of the temple where the other people were able to worship. And so on it was placed the Ark of the Covenant. And this Ark of the Covenant was basically where the laws, the Ten Commandments were written. Um, and so the priest would enter in that one day in a year he would enter in and make a sacrifice on behalf of his people. On behalf of his own family, he would sacrifice a bull, the blood of a bull. On behalf of the Jews, he would sacrifice the blood of a goat. 
And so these these uh, blood sacrifices were meant to atone for their sins and incense was also spread. And the incense was basically to purify the air from uncleanliness, from unclean spirits, and to just um, more or less help them turn over and seek repentance from God. So that was what was done in the Old Testament. It was a ritual and that was something that was held sacred by the Israelites. Coming to the New Testament when Christ came, Christ came and abolished the law. By abolishing the law, it meant that, um, first of all, on his death, on his death, I think it's in um, Matthew chapter 57, chapter 27, verse 51. On his death, um, when he died, the exact moment he died, the veil was torn, the veil of the temple was torn, and it was torn from top to bottom. What that meant was that we now had access to the Holy of Holies. What that meant was that we had access to the innermost part, of the sacred part of God through Christ. His blood that was shed once and for all was able to atone us of sin. And it's not something that is now that now had to take a specific time. It didn't have to be once a year. It didn't have to need the high priest. It meant that it was not just for the Israelites, but it was for you and I. And, and so we were able to access the Holy of Holies in just the belief that Christ came, he died, and he rose again. And so the gospel in itself, believing and trusting in it, is able to allow us to access Christ, who is the Holy of Holies. When I go back to this, um, when I go back to this scripture, it just highlights that, you know, we have confidence to enter this most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain. And so now the curtain is no longer a veil. It's no longer something that has to be embodied. It is no longer a physical thing. His body became the veil. And at that precise moment, the veil tore and it, it now symbolized Christ's body. Christ's body had to now be the passage. It had to be the threshold through which we are able to access God. And so for me, this scripture is um, it's encouraging for me because it, it, it's giving me hope. It's giving me assurance that God's presence is anywhere. As long as you believe in your heart and you profess in your, on your tongue, God is ever so present. It's no longer something that has to be, that is an event. Um, it is accessed, it's easily accessed to you and me. Um, it goes on to say that let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. We no longer need the blood of animals. We no longer need essence. It, is, it was the blood for Christ that was able to wash our sin. And so if we are constantly repentant with a sincere heart, he's able to rid us of sin and give us life. In this season, I am worshiping through a song that is called Holy Spirit. Um, this song is it's speaking to me more, more, um, more vividly now because when Christ was, was going, when he was ascending into heaven, he left us with the Holy Spirit. And this is meant to be our helper. This is meant to be, you know, closer to us, more relatable to us. And the, the, the bridge of this song um, urges us to, it says, let us be, become more aware of your presence. Let us um, experience the goodness of the Lord. This song just reminds me that all, all that it needs is for us to accept and dwell in his presence, for us to just commune with him, wherever that may be, whatever that may look like for us. And the Holy Spirit being so near to us has given us that confidence that, you know, it is well and that God is really, really present.
message that I would want to share today is just to urge, to urge anyone out there, to urge um, my brothers, my sisters, that the presence of the Lord is no longer. Christ has rid us of the rituals that, 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 first of all, we don't even deserve to be in His presence. We are not of the church, we were not the beginning church, we're not of the Israelites, but through the coming of the, of, 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 of the Son, you and me are able to, to partake of this. And so the presence of the Lord is not far from us. It is really, really near. If we can draw nearer to Him, if we can um, seek Him, if we can just um, ask for His presence to be closer to us, even in this time of waiting, in this time of uncertainty, you know, in this time, so many people are going through a lot. Um, plans have just been altered. Things that we thought, what was our new normal is no longer the new normal. And so this can be quite frightening. It can be, you know, it can cause a lot of fear. It can cause a lot of doubt. But Christ is assuring us that He's ever so present. And so He's also there in this time. Let us take this moment to just reflect upon His goodness, to reflect that He is in this with us. Um, there is a verse, uh, Jeremiah 33 says that, Call unto me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. All that we need to do is call unto God and, and just seek Him, and we'll hear from Him, definitely. Yeah.